There's only one thing that causes weight loss, so stay tuned to see if you're violating this rule. If you want to learn how to stop regaining the same 10 to 20 pounds so that you can feel confident in any outfit, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. When it comes down to it, weight loss is simple. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Vivian. I'm an online fitness and nutrition coach, and I don't care if you're doing keto, if you're vegan, or if the only thing you eat are chicken nuggies. The only thing that will determine if you will lose weight is if you're in a caloric deficit. This means you're eating less or expending more energy than what your body needs to maintain itself. So if you need to maintain on 2000 calories and you eat 1700 calories, then you're gonna lose weight, no matter if those calories are coming from the nuggies or from all fats. Let's say you're doing keto. So your diet is high fat, moderate protein, and low carb. There's nothing magical about this combination that causes you to lose weight because obviously you have people following the keto diet who are gaining weight, maintaining weight, and losing weight. And you can do all, th all three of those on any diet. It just happens that the parameter of this diet and a lot of diets make it so that you happen to be in a caloric deficit. You increase your chances of eating less than you were before. There's nothing bad or wrong with eating sugar. It just happens that because it tastes so good, it's easy to overeat, which puts you in a caloric surplus, which is why some people think that sugar equals weight gain. No, it's just sugar can lead to a caloric surplus if you don't realize it, which can lead to weight gain. But in keto, you cannot be eating sugar because it's low carb. Sugar is a carb, you can't be eating that much of it. So because you have to eliminate those, then you're cutting out a lot of calories and you're likely in a caloric deficit just from cutting out sweets. But I promise you, you can enjoy sweets and sugar and desserts and all the good stuff while losing weight, while being healthy. So when people get hyped about these weight loss diets like paleo, whole 30, or vegetarianism, that's because those increase your chances of being in a caloric deficit and therefore losing weight. But notice that I say increase your chances. So you could totally do these diets and not lose weight. You could even gain weight because it's the calories that matter. So the cool thing is that you don't have to jump through these hoops and like cut out certain food groups or like never eat a donut ever again because you can ensure that you're in a caloric deficit through tracking your macros. This is what I have all my clients do. We know that as long as they hit their macro targets, they're on track to lose weight and they can eat whatever they want within reason. So they understand that most of their food should be coming from whole sources. So, you know, vegetables, fruits, meats, all that good stuff. But they also understand that there is no such thing as a bad food. So if they want to eat a donut or cheese corn dog or drink beer, that's totally fine. They can fit it in their macros, enjoy food, enjoy life, and still be on track to lose weight. I'm actually really curious. Let me know in the comments if you prefer these diets that have parameters where it's like you can't eat X, Y, and Z, or if you rather eat whatever you want and just track the quantity of them. I understand maybe you don't want to track your macros because you think that it might be restricting or a hassle to have to weigh out your food. That's exactly what I thought too. I heard about tracking your macros in high school, but I didn't start until years later because I didn't want to be overwhelmed by that process or like have to think so much about food. But honestly, this is just a tool. You don't have to do it for the rest of your life, but it teaches you so much and it's brought me so much freedom and peace about food because before it was like, oh, like a cookie might be bad. Like there are foods out there that are sabotaging my weight loss efforts. It's going to make me fat. This food is bad, but like, you know, you kind of like eat it anyways. There's none of that anymore. None of that food anxiety because I know like I know everything that I'm eating, I know what it does to my body, and I understand that as long as my calories are equated, like nothing can faze me, nothing can ruin my weight loss efforts. I want you to experience that same joy and freedom, so I recommend that you track your macros. And I know it's tempting to just estimate because maybe you don't want to bring out your food scale, but if you think you've been in a caloric deficit, but you aren't losing weight, maybe you're not. And it wouldn't hurt to just track, even for a few days, just to see where you're at because that data is valuable. Knowledge truly is power. It's purely data for your benefit. Don't feel bad, this is not supposed to be judgment on you. Research shows that people tend to underestimate how many calories a food has. So if you track your macros for a few days or a week would be better and you find out that you've been eating in maintenance or a caloric surplus, 
that's amazing news because now you know exactly what you need to do you just have to go into a deficit and then you'll lose weight it's no mystery no more guesswork it's not like oh was this brownie sabotaging me or oh am i just cursed with a slow metabolism no you just weren't in a deficit easy peasy and when you track you do want to track everything that goes in your mouth i know that like a handful of nuts or like a bite of somebody's sandwiches can seem like oh it's nothing no big deal but those can really add up because a caloric deficit it's just a few hundred calories but if you have like those nuts and like a little sip and a bite and like all these little things when they add up that could just put you in maintenance or even a surplus there's nothing wrong with eating out at restaurants but if you're doing it a lot and you're not losing weight, you need to keep this in mind that even though restaurants now have nutrition facts and calories on their website, they're not always accurate because you have human error. Like a chef might be heavy handed when they scoop you food or they might cook with a little bit extra oil. And so those calories will add up. I'm not saying to never eat out again, but it's just something to keep in mind that like sauces could also have sugar and they might cook with more oil than you normally would at home. So if you've been tracking everything that you eat at home, then the food from restaurants, that's another variable. Don't be anxious, don't freak out about this. Like I can eat out and be just fine. So what I do to cover my bases, if I really just wanna make sure that I'm not gonna go over my calories is that I'll log the food and then I'll just log an extra like 10 grams of oil and like 20 grams of sugar, just, just in case. What you eat and how much of it matters. But another thing to consider is that now that a lot of us are just staying at home, we're not moving as much, we're not out and about, so we're burning less calories and that could put you out of that caloric deficit. What I've been doing to make sure that I'm still losing weight and I'm still moving my body is that I go on walks and make sure that I hit 10,000 steps every single day. So between walking, my training, my nutrition, it's a game about controlling what you can so that your chances of weight loss success are high. And as always, consistency matters. If you're only in a caloric deficit for a few days or maybe one week, that's not long enough for you to see the long-term results. And if you go like on and off, and so you go like one week in a deficit, one week in a surplus, same thing, that's not enough for you to lose weight long-term. If you want to learn my blueprint to lose the weight for good, then you can download my step-by-step -step guide in the description box down below. If you like the video, press the like button. If you like the kind of information I put out, press the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below if this video has helped you figure out why you might not be losing weight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm grateful for you, and I hope your life is filled with gratitude too.